a video tutorial on MapECU3. I've just started MapECU3 or MapCal3 now and you'll see the message down the bottom that the map sensor configuration file is loaded. That's the normal message when you start MapCal3. Uh, and we have a MapEC3 connected to the USB port, drivers installed and so forth, it's all working. The first thing you'd do normally is you'd hit the connect button. Now we recommend you don't go and open a data file, load your base table or anything like that. There's no need to do that. You've got a copy sitting in the MapEC3. So connect, hit OK to load from the MapEC3. The important thing to watch is the status box. Status box tells you what's going on. So at the moment, you can see that MapCal is loading everything from the MapEC3. So now we're live, what we call online, and the status box has changed to reading data. So it's constantly pulling data from the MapEC3 about its current parameters. So you'll see RPM is live, and we've got a test box connected up to the MapEC3 to exercise all the functions and um, we can adjust things like TPS and so forth and you'll see that when we change RPM the zone, fuel zone changes, fuel table um, changes and the fuel output changes so it's exercising the unit and you'll see the mini fuel table is actually adjusting as well now in this case you'll see the mini fuel table is stopping at 6000 RPM because this unit's configured at a maximum RPM of 6000 so um, that's why the mini fuel table is stopping there. We'll show you that under ECU configuration. So this is running the very latest firmware that supports um, Wi-Fi, the iPhone app, and uh, therefore adjusting the uh, RPM range. If you now go into the fuel table, you'll see in table um, graph mode, you've got the graph. Uh, if I toggle the follow me mode with the space bar, it follows me around as I adjust the RPM and you'll see the 6000 max RPM there. If I hit the T key, go to table mode and exactly the same thing. It, uh, it tracks using the, the follow me mode. Space bar again and follow me is turned off. Simple. Graph, G for graph mode again. Um, five, function five or that tab for ignition timing, so this base table doesn't have any ignition timing adjustments. Auxiliary ejectors, again this doesn't have anything in it, and no I to adjust. If we now go to the ECU configuration screen, we can see how this MAP ECU3 is configured. With um, MAPCAL 3.4, we changed the configuration screen to use tabs, because we were running out of screen real estate uh, for all the functions. So here, this is the, the general tab where you set the mode. Modes in the map ECU3 are MAF elimination, MAP replacement. Um, so that's the standard, if you like, MAP ECU3 modes where you eliminate the NAS airflow sensor or the MAP sensor. And then there's a number of intercept and other modes such as KVF elimination, Kármán vortex frequency airflow meter elimination, HF is high frequency mode and then a number of intercept modes as well. The other elimination mode is um, things like elimination with a TPS input as the Y axis. Now if you're not sure what the Y axis means, that's the load axis. So if I go into um, MAF elimination, the default, if I go into the fuel table, the, the default load is the MAP sensor. So in this case, it's the zero or minus um, 20.4 inches of mercury to 35 psi. So that's the load. If you change it to TPS, Y axis, that's the, the load on that Y axis. X axis is RPM, Y axis is load. Back to ECU configuration. This is where you set the pressure scale. So what's important to note is that all these ones on the pressure scale options are just various configurations for the internal map sensor. So the internal map sensor can sense up to 42 psi, which you'll see is the very high boost option. But everything where it says um, high boost, very high boost, and so forth, uh, before the manufacturer, as I mentioned, uses the internal map sensor. So that's quite important to know. 
for example this minus 30 inches to 3 psi that's a naturally aspirated table so lots of lines or rows of vacuum very little in the way of boost so if you've you choose the right pressure scale depending on your configuration then you can have various external map sensors plugged into the three-way connector on the map ECU3 a couple of Toyota map sensors uh, with varying boost configurations the model numbers are, are shown there some GM um, two bar and three bar uh, map sensors and you're uh, they're actually the same two bar sensor and same three bar sensor but these are just different pressure scales like the internal map sensor configurations and finally AEM 5 bar for the really high boost configuration um, when you select a, boost, a pressure scale you'll see that the vacuum lines and boost lines and pressure per row are configured down here if we select another one of those you'll see this changes to 4 vacuum lines 14 boost lines but now it's 3 psi per row if I select the naturally aspirated it's 15 vacuum lines, 3 boost lines and it's only 1 psi so a very uh, high resolution table then the next uh, option is ignition configuration in this case we've got a map ECU3 tester plugged in which exercises all 8 ignition channels so we've configured to 8 channel or 8 cylinders coil on plug uh, you essentially wire configure this to the wiring that you've got if you've got a Supra it would be 6 cylinder coil on plug um, it's a GTE if it's a GE you would select 6 cylinders distributor so it's the number of wires that are actually configured on the unit compensation configuration enable IAT compensation it um, basically allows you to allows the map ECU3 using the IAT sensor that you plug into the two-way connector that's pigtailed off the, off the 16 way to do IAT compensation instead of using the uh, IAT in the vehicle barometric pressure compensation this takes a sample of the barometric pressure when you first power on the ECU and therefore um, it then compensates based on that value so in this case we've got barometric pressure 10 13 which is effectively sea level so the barometric compensation would be zero uh, but that's what that's uh, that functions uh, for maximum rpm as i said before this one's set to 6000 you can set in 100 rpm increments a maximum rpm this will uh, effectively squash all the columns and give you a better resolution if your vehicle doesn't rev out to 10,000 RPM. RPM switch is a function that allows you to um, create a switched output. So for example, you could use that for a, um, a, a shift light or something that you want to turn on when it reaches that RPM. So at 6,000 RPM, it will turn an output on when you configure the IO. MAF out RPM equals zero is very important for MAF elimination and MAP um, replacement modes. This is the voltage the MAP ECU3 outputs when you first turn on the ignition and before you start cranking the engine. So as it says, MAF out RPM equals zero. This has got to be the same as the MAF output voltage of a airflow sensor when you hit the key on uh, but there's no airflow going through. It's a way of the OEM ECU knowing if there's a problem with the MAF sensor or not. And this number is quite different when you have a MAP replacement um, configuration. MAF2, our RPM equals zero, is the value that's grayed out at the moment. Uh, but that becomes available when you're running dual fuel table mode, which we'll talk about another time. And it's the same function of, as MAF out, but it's for the secondary input output. MAF clamp is a way of clamping the entire fuel table um, to a voltage so if you effectively creating a fuel cut to feet so if your fuel table causes a fuel cut at for example 4.7 volts you'd put 4.7 volts in here 
just by entering 4.7 and that'll clamp everything or the, the fuel table output regardless of what's in the fuel table to 4.7 volts. A pressure switch, a bit like the switch, RPM switch function, the pressure switch output allows you to add a boost level that you'd like to switch on an output. So that could be a um, intercooler spray for cooling the intercooler or any sort of pressure related function. TDC offset is an adjustment value when you're using the TDC input to display base timing so that you're getting the right base timing value. Override primary secondary switch is a function that allows you to override a configured input for switching between primary and secondary uh, fuel tables and ignition tables and so forth. When it's checked, the, um, the software can switch between primary and secondary. When it's unswitched or unchecked, it's, um, you can't be overridden by MapCal. Auto Learn is a function that we had in the old, old units. We don't use it so often now, but it allows you to build a base table from an existing mass airflow sensor. So when you've got the orange MAF input wire connected to an existing MAF sensor in learn mode, you zero out the fuel table and it'll start to try and populate all the values in the uh, fuel table. Now it's not a ready to run fuel table, but it's good enough to start from with a brand new vehicle that we haven't done before. As I said before, barometric pressure is 10 to 13 millibars, which is effectively sea level today. The firmware version of the MAP ECU3 connected is 4.6, and its serial number is 30,000.